to uh, this uh, episode of Season Day Scholar, Season 3. Uh, we have been following uh, Professor Ray for, uh, from the first season, and uh, somehow the time has come. And uh, now, today we have with us uh, Professor Chitranjan Ray, who is uh, permanent director of the Nebraska Water Center. And uh, he is also uh, a by training, he is a civil engineer and he did his PhD from University of Illinois. And um, he has been a thorough uh, profile uh, where he has been uh, chief environmental engineer at University of Hawaii um, uh, before Nebraska. And he also worked after PhD at Illinois uh, State Water Survey. He's someone who is really at the top of bridge of quantity and quality, which is very much important for water security. Uh, because uh, nowadays, uh, just an expert of quality or just an expert of quantity perhaps will not work. And he has a lot of work in India also. Mm, and so welcome to this uh, Sosa. Uh, it is very pleasure to have you. Thank you, Anish. Didn't you apply or thought to go back to India? Or did you apply some point of time that, no, I can? Uh, and no. if not, then why not? India, when I finished my, like, uh, let's say, the work in the company, getting the green card, then go, getting a PhD, then going to Hawaii, uh, because the daughter was born here, the wife was here, there, uh, she has sister uh, here, all those things. So I said, let me just try first in Hawaii. But then the issue comes uh, in uh, when I was already at the University of Hawaii, then who, what position I'll go get when I go back? That question came also. I took a sabbatical actually, 2004 in yes, Hawaii. Uh, full bright. Full bright. Uh, but then I saw also that I had good contacts and IIT Kadakpur was the host. Yeah. I spent quite a bit of time in Arurki. Other IITs also Kanpur and some of the engineering I mean, so NITs. Mm -hmm. um, on to Nepal for uh, 10 days. Uh, but uh, then the issue is, uh, what can I do there? Because um, um, if I would have, been, I mean, you know, things have uh, changed over time. Maybe the present government is more accepting people from outside. Yeah, electoral entries are there, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in the older system, I don't the think there was... In the older system, there was no scope. If you are not on the train of the first train, then you yeah. have missed all the train. Uh, yeah, it's a kind of uh, uh, Harry Potter train or a station. <laughs> <laughs> you will enter or you will not enter. What are the three burning questions uh, which is going to be relevant in the next decade, even in the next decade? Um, and uh, what is the contrast with the Indian problem? Yeah, so one of the things uh, what I'm seeing is going to be the next um, uh, hot potato to deal with is uh, climate impacts or uh, food production as well as uh, drinking water, all those uh, lines. So the urban, rural sustainability, food sustainability, all those are tied to climate and water. So that's probably one of the big drivers. And then the corporations are already in that space. Uh, Deloitte already placed $1 billion to these climate solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft uh, is in a big way trying to go carbon negative um, since the company was formed. I forget what year uh, uh, this uh, um, you know, maybe 2050 or before that. Uh, so they are already investing heavily with uh, agriculture sector, like uh, trying to produce commodities uh, so that you can store carbon or reduce greenhouse gas. Amazon Web Service, same way. Uh, many, many companies, you know, small startups and all that. Sometime down the road, the branding will be that this food you're buying in the supermarket is grown in a climate smart way, like organic brand. So you followed a practice that stored more carbon in the soil at the same time reduced greenhouse gas. Or the meat coming to the market, chicken or fish or whatever, it's grown in a sustainable way. The grain which are fed to the animals 
that's basically um, done in a very sustainable way. Yeah, for sustainable agriculture and soil health also, you have uh, once yeah. uh, told <clears throat> nowadays, yeah. uh, there is a like Sadhguru uh, who is also trying to yeah. make a social movement uh, towards that only upper part of the soil is uh, can support the agriculture. So we, uh, how to not to lose it. Yeah. Um, so those things are there. Any uh, special need in India, Indian countries? Yeah, you know, uh, there are two things happening that uh, both for internal consumption as well as for export. India is becoming also export hub for uh, uh, many like uh, cereals, like general meals mm -hmm. or other companies are there. Uh, they are uh, taking uh, making things in India and taking to other places. Uh, so what happens that uh, uh, if General Mills uh, is trying to sell cereals made in India, their ultimate goal is to uh, not to compete with the farmers, uh, local farmers to put them in jeopardy because they want to do the, their, because they have the money. They probably can afford to uh, do whatever they want to do in terms of uh, um, higher amount of irrigation or, or, or you know, more fertilizer use or uh, best yields and all that. But can you really look into growing this in a sustainable way, but at the same time having the high quality, less nitrogen input, less water input. So the companies are looking for that. And if you get that tag, then it's a win-win for both the local farmers or as well as the company itself, which is marketing the product in other countries. Right now, the India movie market uh, is big, you know, the, and popcorn, I did not know the popcorn is becoming a big uh, uh, thing in Indian movie theaters. Yeah, so, yeah, it's uh, mm. Guess who is in that popcorn market in India now? It's a big uh, popcorn company from Nebraska called Preferred Popcorns. Oh. I was, uh, um, I was, and he has, uh, I forget what, uh, maybe 10,000 acres or 10,000 hect hectares, something like that, a large, uh, amount of acreage, but these are smallholder farmers, maybe 5,000 of them. They are growing under a contract basis, the popcorn. Then he's making the popcorn and providing to the uh, movie theaters. I think there may be some intermediary and all that. So the Indian uh, Consulate General from Houston and other uh, Nebraska governor, they are in a call. I was with them. I just came to know. So these are kind of the things happening also that the technology, the popcorn growing is, uh, you know, it's uh, genetic wise, uh, seeds and all those things they can provide from here. But uh, here in a push of a button, you can uh, have your irrigation system, you can have, you know, remote control tractors and all those things. But in India, it's hard to do. So how can you work with the local people to do this water management, do this nutrient management, do this production in a uh, sustainable way so that you not only uh, provide a profit to the farmers, but at the same time, uh, conserve the resources. Moisture sensors used for irrigation, or um, you use uh, fertilizers in a way that that will have less nitrous oxide emission, all those kind of things. So yeah, that's one thing you said, I asked for three. So the second is the drinking water um, problems for India. Uh, big cities, are, uh, yeah. They are your, uh, like I recall my um, conversation with you when I was in Nebraska that, uh, and there you have seen some river bed filtration uh, thing. <clears throat> um, yeah. I mean, it needs to be protected as well as, um, so uh, So I, I know that you have been working on that and you said that this is a more burning problem in India. <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, first thing is that, uh, you know, riverbank filtration works well when your source water quality is good. But if you have a, a river flow with 50% sewage, you cannot anticipate to produce drinking water out of that. So you are familiar with that uh, zap chlorination or a high initial chlor shock chlorination that they do to kill the organics before treatment. So but uh, we don't monitor the trial methods that really carefully, what it forms. So those are some of the issues, but um, that is uh, fortunately my good colleague from uh, Germany, Thomas Grischek, he has been working with uh, many folks and uh, NIH, Rurki and other places. Uttarakhand was uh, one of the playgrounds for him. He did a lot of work there. Delhi is also looking for uh, some of those uh, Rani collector wells and uh, Delhi is quite a bit reliant on those uh, sources. Ahmedabad, 
uh, you know, the Sabarmati wells, uh, mm -hmm. riverbed wells there, okay, Baroda. There is huge potential. I think it could be explored. Railway has been using this for a long time, you know, in Madhinipur, other places. Uh, I was telling uh, some colleagues at IIT Bhuvaneshwar uh, that look into something uh, on the Mahanadi because of both Kotak and Bhuvaneshwar with uh, oh, maybe 1.5 million people now approaching uh, or uh, over a million. I would say close to 1.5 million. The main treatment plant is only 30 million liters per day. So you don't need really a treatment plant uh, if you go with uh, a series of vertical wells and uh, and uh, they have the right uh, location, like upstream from Katak, there is a barrage and uh, you have your round flow. You don't have really the pollution you see near Kanpur or you see near uh, Lucknow. Lucknow, yeah, we looked into the Gomti River, but the sugar industry discharge was so heavy that the water was all the time dark. Kanpur also same issue, but now the new barrage has really helped quite a bit. Um, looking at places in Allahabad or Baranasi. Baranasi, of course, yeah. So so that's one area in the coastal cities of uh, Rajmohindri or um, Bijayawada. Um, some of the other places in uh, Karnataka, another colleague of mine from uh, Rhode Island, um, he has been working there uh, for some years, uh, Kali River, north part of Karnataka. So, so there is huge potential, it can be done. Uh, but I don't know. I think the traditional engineering approach, you have to have some management uh, needed that you cannot have too much scouring. You have to do in a way that uh, in a place too much deposition and scouring can be avoided. But I think it's possible. Like in the, if you have a controlled release system like this, Sabarmati. Sabarmati is one of the ideal places for these collector wells right now because you can augment the flow or you can reduce the flow, all those mm. provisions.